What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brooke. Welcome back to another Crafty Workshop video. Today's video, I've got three more shop organization related projects for you. I know it's been a lot of shop organization here lately with last week's French cleat project, but it is the beginning of the new year and I'm getting geared up to film my yearly shop tour video. So wanted to get everything kind of nice and tidy before doing that. The first project I'm gonna show you is this plywood and sheet goods cart back here. It's great for storing full sheets of plywood as well as offcuts, which I hang on to probably way too many plywood offcuts. The second thing I'm going to work on is this lumber storage system here. I've got a commercially available lumber rack up here and then I repurposed the lumber rack I already had down here. The combination of the two gives me a ton of lumber storage and it's kind of out of the way in this long vertical weird hallway space I have. And then the last thing I'm going to show you is this new LED shop lighting I installed both here in this hallway and out in my shop. This is all from American Green Lights, super high quality LED lights, a really high color rendering index, which means that they represent color really true to life. And also all of my shop lights are now the same color temperature. So when I move from one area of the shop to another, I don't have to mess with the white balance on my video. So hopefully you guys enjoy these and let's go ahead and get started with the first build. After searching around online a little bit for plywood carts, I found an example from Wood Magazine that I really liked, and it's actually one that Jay Bates had built in a previous video as well. So I bought the plans for the cart, and I'll have a link to those in the video description in case you're wanting to build one of these for yourself. These L-shaped pieces provide support at the ends of the cart, and also provide a place for the casters to mount to, which you'll see later. I attached these pieces with glue and a couple of 2.5 inch screws. Next, I started building the frame of the base. First, I attached one piece of 2x4 perpendicular to the end of the longer 2x4 using 2.5 inch screws. I then attached one of the L-shaped pieces next to the first piece, again using 2.5 inch screws. Working my way down the base, I added one of the centered support pieces, which is spaced roughly 29 inches from the left side of the base. Next, I repeated the same process at the other end of the base, attaching the same pieces but mirrored to fit the right side of the base. With half of the base assembled, I then attach the 8 foot long 2x6 to the other side of the base, and this 2x6 will provide a lip for the sheet goods to rest against. Again, I connected everything with 2.5 inch screws, and also, while pre-drilling wasn't really necessary with the self-tapping screws I used, I found that the screws were a lot easier to drive and also looked cleaner when I pre-drilled the holes first. With the framing of the base finished, I broke the sheet of 3 quarter inch plywood down into strips, the first of which made up the bottom panel on the base. Before attaching the panel to the base, I needed to notch it out so that the side panels could be attached later, and I did this with a jigsaw. To attach the panel to the base, I used inch and a quarter screws, making sure the heads were below the surface of the plywood so that sheets of plywood could be slid on and off of the cart later without catching on screw heads. Next, I cut the side panels to length from the strips of plywood I ripped earlier, and the center panel is shorter than the side panels here. All of the panels are tapered from top to bottom so that the sheets of plywood will lean back when loaded onto the cart. I marked this taper using my track as a straight edge and then started to make the cut using a jigsaw before realizing that the pieces were too thick. I added some blue tape to connect the three panels and then moved to the bandsaw to make the cut on all three panels at the same time. I ended up with a slightly wavy cut, it's probably actually time for this blade to be sharpened, but I ran the pieces over the jointer a few times just to clean up the edge. The center panel has a few notches cut out to accept the 2x4 cross supports, so I marked those out according to the plans and then cut out the notches using the jigsaw. Next, I attached the side panels to the base using glue and inch and a quarter screws, and you can see here why I needed to notch out the bottom panel for the side panels to fit into place. Also, it really helps to drop one of the side panels during assembly. With the side panels in place, I could go ahead and add the center panel, and I figured it'd be easiest to go ahead and attach one of the 2x4 cross supports to the center panel before adding it to the cart, since it would help keep the panel upright during the assembly process. I made sure the 2x4 was square to the panel, and then attached it with two inch and a quarter screws. Next, I put the center panel in place, making sure it was square to the base, and then attached the side panels to the 2x4 support, again making sure everything was nice and square. With one of the cross supports in place, I could go ahead and attach the other three cross supports the same way with two screws at each end as well as in the center. After all the cross supports were installed, I added a few screws off camera from the underside of the cart through the bottom panel into the center panel just to hold it in place a little more. The last piece to add to the cart was the casters, which I installed using a few inch and a quarter screws. Finally, I awkwardly flipped over the cart, which was massive at this point, and then I got it loaded up with all the various sheet goods around my shop. This cart holds a surprising amount of offcuts and full sheets and is gonna be a super convenient addition to my lumber storage system. 
The next project for this hallway was improving my lumber storage. I have super tall walls in this area, so I wanted to capitalize on that height by adding some vertical lumber storage. I found these Bora lumber racks on sale at my local Lowe's for $20 for each pair, and I figured I just couldn't beat that price by building something myself. They go together really easily, just a couple of screws hold everything in place. To install the racks, first I marked 16 inches from the closest wall, and then marked the hole for the uppermost screw for the rack. To attach the racks to my concrete block walls, I used two and three quarter inch Tapcon screws. I used a masonry bit that was matched to the diameter of my screws to pre-drill the holes, which is a loud and messy process. I'm always a little jealous of people who have drywall and stud walls in their shops. After hanging the rack on the first screw, I checked the rack for plumb and then marked the locations of the other two holes using a drill bit to mark the holes. I then removed the rack and drilled the holes to full depth before reinstalling the rack permanently. To install the second rack, I referenced off of the first rack, making sure it was level with the first, and just continued the process of adding more screws, just like the first rack. I just kept working my way down the wall until I had all six racks hung, and then I could get it loaded down with all my lumber. For 60 bucks total, I really don't think I could have done better making this myself, especially when I consider the labor time involved of trying to do a DIY option here. The last update to this area of the shop was adding some lighting to make the space more usable. In this hallway, I used six of these four foot, 24 watt LED shop lights from American Green Lights, who are a manufacturer of really high quality LED lighting. These shop lights are available in different lengths and wattages to suit your specific needs, but six of them spaced evenly along this hallway gave me nice even lighting the full length of the hallway. Also, before moving on, I wanna mention that I am not an electrician and that you should check your local code requirements and consult an electrician before trying anything I'm showing here. With that out of the way, first I wired an extension cord to the first light in the chain so that I could just plug it into the existing outlet which is controlled with a light switch. I then daisy chained two more lights onto the first light and repeated this process for each half of the hallway so that I had three lights running on each chain. I used 14-2 Romex to connect the lights since this is a 15 amp circuit. And before you get outraged in the comments, I am going to go back and add EMT conduit between each light this weekend once I have an extra set of hands to help me out. These lights are super simple to wire. I just connected the hot to hot, neutral to neutral, and ground to ground. And to attach the lights to my ceiling, I use self-tapping metal screws and use three screws for each fixture. The lights come in two parts, the enclosure for the wiring and then the panel with the LEDs on them. And these parts are pre-wired with snap connectors that just snap together and the LED panel attaches to the enclosure with a few included screws. Super simple to install and the lighting improvement is amazing. All right, the last upgrade I wanna show you guys are these retrofit kits from American Green Lights. These are LED strips that are designed to replace the fluorescent bulbs in kind of your standard fluorescent troffers, which I happen to already have in my shop. The really cool thing about these is the voltage required for these is super, super low. It actually will run on doorbell wire. So you can surface mount these, even if your shop doesn't have a full ceiling, even if it's just joists, you can just screw these right to the joists and then run doorbell wire exposed, no need for conduit or anything like that since it's so low voltage and you get really nice lighting that's super easy to add pretty much anywhere. So the way these are powered are with these drivers. Each one of these drivers will power two of these 24 watt strips. That's the ones I went with. And then these just need to be hooked up to your standard 120 voltage. And so what's really cool is you can put a bunch of these drivers into one enclosure, mount that on your wall and run one line of 120 volt power into it and then run doorbell wire all over the place and get lighting where you don't have power available. So Andy Klein actually did this exact thing in a video on his channel with these American Green Light kits and it turned out really great. I actually haven't done that yet. I've just replaced them in my fluorescent troffers. I'll have a link to Andy's video in the video description below if you wanna check that out. So let me go ahead and show you how these install in these fluorescent troffers just so you can see how those work there. So to open these up, you just pull these two little tabs. There's one on each end and then they drop down. There are always bugs in here, so look out. Anyway, you can see how these are mounted. I just used some self-tapping sheet metal screws and screwed them right into the tropper themselves. You can see that one of these strips is the equivalent light output of two of these kind of four foot standard fluorescent bulbs. So I only had to install two strips per tropper. You can either remove the ballasts like I did here that power the original fluorescents, or you can even leave them in place so that if you were going 
to be moving, you could just basically remove this, reconnect the line voltage back to the ballast, and then you'd be able to put back in the fluorescent light. Super, super simple to install. I did 16 troffers in here and did them all in less than a day. And the light quality is just so, so much better. So this is a great option if you have these fluorescent troffers in your shop and they're a lot less power. I think they use about 50% less power than fluorescent. So you'll actually make your money back uh, depending on how long you're gonna be using these. All right, hopefully you guys found some of these projects useful. I know I am really excited to have this new hallway open up for me and all of this new lighting in the shop. Now, I installed all these retrofit kits a few months ago and some of you guys actually even noticed the lighting improvement in the shop. So I'm glad that that's noticeable to you guys, the viewers. I wanna thank the folks at American Green Lights again for supporting the channel by providing all of the lighting for this video. Uh, if you guys wanna learn more about them, check out the link in the video description below. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you don't already, go ahead and get subscribed and ring that little notification bell so you're notified every time I put out a video. I put out videos about every week at this point. Also, I've started live streaming more, so the notification bell helps to kind of let you know when I'm gonna be live streaming. Those are a lot of fun. Plan on doing those about every week or so. So hopefully you guys can join me there. And last, I have links to all the tools and materials I used in this project in the video description below. All right, thanks again for watching everybody, and until next time, happy building.